Welcome to Galveston Unscripted. Welcome aboard the Bolivar Ferry. For a quick history of the ferry, check out the link in the description below. This audio tour is laid out for your ride from Galveston to Bolivar Peninsula. So if you are riding from Bolivar to Galveston, you can definitely still listen. Just know that everything will be in reverse. Your ride will only be about 20 minutes, with much to see along the way. Your ferry will be traveling at around 12 knots, or 14 miles per hour. This 2.7 mile trip across the water will take you through an area of Galveston Bay known as Bolivar Roads. The distance between Galveston and Bolivar is the largest opening for Galveston Bay into the Gulf of Mexico, which makes it a prime location for shipping vessels to bring their cargo in and out of the three busiest ports in Texas and the U.S. This is one of the busiest ship channels in the nation. Bolivar Roads is where the Intracoastal Waterway and the Houston, Galveston, and Texas City ship channels all come together. Now that we've established the importance of Bolivar Roads and the ship channels, let's get this tour started. Once you have arrived onto the ferry, you have probably already encountered one of the deckhands. These deckhands are the backbone of the Bolivar Ferry. Along with their exceptional parking skills, these guys are well trained to handle any of the equipment you see on deck. While boarding, to your immediate right, you will see the ferry mooring area where the ferry boats are cleaned, repaired, and repainted. Looking past the mooring area, you will see the Galveston headquarters of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Looking a bit farther past that building, you will see a U.S. Coast Guard base. On your left, you will have a great view of the Port of Galveston and Pelican Island. You may have noticed that your ferry does not need to turn around. The ferry was designed and built to be loaded with vehicles and driven in either direction to enhance operational efficiency. This basic concept has been practiced for almost a century dating back to the early days of the Bolivar Ferry. If you were wondering, there is only one captain on board, and he or she needs to walk from one bridge or driving area to the other after each trip. Once the ferry starts moving, you will be able to get out of your vehicle and walk about the vessel. If you go up the stairs at the center line of the ferry, it will take you to the viewing deck where you will have a great view of just about everything. Two or three minutes after you have left the ferry landing, if you look to your left, you will have a great view of Seawolf Park and the Galveston Naval Museum. The two vessels you see sitting at the park are the USS Stewart, which is a World War II destroyer escort, and the USS Kavala, a hunter-killer submarine known for sinking the Japanese aircraft carrier, the Shikaku, in 1944. I highly recommend a visit to the Galveston Naval Museum while you're here in Galveston. Seawolf Park is known in this part of Texas as a first-class fishing destination. While you are looking the same direction, a bit past Seawolf Park, you will see what looks like a sunken ship. Well, you are correct. That is because that is a sunken World War I cargo ship, known as the SS Selma. During World War I, steel was in short supply for anything except the war. So a plan was hatched to build 24 concrete oil tankers. Only 12 of these vessels were actually completed. The Selma was built in Mobile, Alabama, and was completed in 1919. In May of 1920, the Selma hit a jetty in Tampico, Mexico, and ripped a 60-foot hole in the side. After many repair efforts failed, officials decided to scuttle the ship in Galveston Bay. With no real forethought or plans, the SS Selma has been sitting there for over 100 years. The SS Selma is not the only sunken concrete ship Galveston can claim. The SS Durham met a similar fate, and lies at the tip of the North Jetty at the entrance to the ship channel. Be sure to look in the water in front of the ferry as you move towards the ship channel and Bolivar. More often than not, you are able to see dolphins breaching the surface and feeding. About 10 minutes after you have left the ferry landing, you are somewhere in the middle of Bolivar Roads. If you look to your right, you are looking directly out towards the Gulf of Mexico. You may see some ships anchored or moving in and out of one of the ports. If you look directly to your left, you are looking towards the port of Texas City and the Texas City Dyke. The Texas City Dyke is a 5 mile long jetty that juts out into Galveston Bay. This jetty keeps sand from building up in the ship channel and eases heavy currents on vessels going in and out of the port of Texas City. To the right of the Texas City Dyke is the entrance to the Houston Ship Channel, one of the busiest ports in the United States. The Houston Ship Channel is over 50 miles long and begins here at the Bolivar Roads and ends just a few miles away from downtown Houston. About 15 minutes into your ferry ride, if you look straight ahead, you should be able to see a lighthouse. This is the historic Point Bolivar Lighthouse. There has been a lighthouse at this location since at least 1852. The original lighthouse was pulled down during the Civil War so that the Union warships could not use it as a navigational aid. The lighthouse as we see it today has looked the same since 1872. This lighthouse served for 61 years before being retired in 1933. While continuing to look towards Bolivar, you may be able to see Fort Travis. 
Fort Travis was the first fort established by the Republic of Texas in 1836 to protect Galveston Harbor. At the time, Galveston was the temporary capital of Texas. Fort Travis was purchased by the federal government in 1898. A seawall was built around the fort after the storm of 1900. The fort was occupied during both world wars and served as an internment camp for German prisoners during World War II. As you can see, the ferry is much more than a way to get from point A to point B. Have you wondered yet? Why don't they just build a bridge? A bridge from Galveston to Bolivar has been proposed multiple times, but that meets many logistical challenges. Most importantly, some of the largest ships in the world traverse this ship channel. Building a bridge high enough for the largest ships and long enough for the ship channel would be extremely expensive and very time-consuming. Why not continue a ferry operation that everyone knows has worked for over a century? Not to mention it's cheaper and easier to run ferries 24 hours a day than to build a bridge that may have to be replaced in 20 years. I hope you've enjoyed this quick tour of the ride from Galveston to Bolivar. About 20 minutes into your ride, you should be coming up to Bolivar Landing. Welcome to Bolivar and watch out for those seagulls. For historic resources or more information, check out the episode description. <laughs>